Hello and welcome to the very first episode of Mummy Time TV. I first had the idea for this show six years ago when my daughter Sailor was born. At the time, I was unable to join a mother's group and I felt really alone and quite isolated. I realized I wasn't alone and that's the whole reason behind this show. To connect real mums to break the isolation and the fear a lot of us experience during the mummy journey. Now on the couch today, I'm joined by some fellow mums, so let me introduce them to you. First up, please welcome Olivia White, mummy to two little girls and a hero to many with her very real online mum blog, House of White. Hey, Shizzy. And our next guest is a mummy to two under three while juggling a career as a health insurance manager, Lisa Gibson. Hello. Hi. And a very warm welcome to our third mummy guest today, Lauren Dubois. She's a mummy to two little people and the creator of the very popular online mummy blog, The Thud. Lauren Dubois. Hi, Shizzy. All right, so I want to start with sleep. Now, my first child slept through from three weeks on. She was a dream. My second child, who's nearly two, has not slept at all. Um, she had silent reflux for the first year, and it, she's a terrible sleeper anyway. I really struggle if I don't have a good night's sleep to string a sentence together. I want to know what sleep's like for you guys. So, Lauren, what's sleep like in your house? I'm sorry, what? I just, I just drifted it off for a second because I haven't slept in four years. So, um, yeah, we don't sleep. Um, I don't, I just, we just don't. So, um, my son was um, the worst human being on the planet um, for the first 12 months. And I mean, he would wake up eight or nine times a night wow. um, to the point where <laughs> we, I was wow. homicidal. It's actually a pretty good testament to our marriage that we survived that. So, um, you know, and we tried everything. We did sleep consultants. I took him, the most devastating part of it was that we took him to sleep school, um, a part of the hospital, four nights there. Yeah. And at the end of that, the nurses turned around and went, oh, he's just a mystery, isn't he? <laughs> and I was like, no, <laughs> fix him. What are you doing? Why can't you fix my child? And that was just pretty much our life for the first 12 months or so. Yeah. And then he figured it out. Mom life. Then my daughter came along and she did sleep and she was pretty good at it. And so I got all smug and I was like, well, obviously I've got skills. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've managed to produce a child that sleeps. And then she hit about 12 months and she forgot. And she just, for the last eight or nine months, has just made our life miserable. <laughs> I now I sleep on her floor, so I have a mattress next to her bed. Really? Yeah. Wow. And how does that work for your marriage? Oh, probably pretty well, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but you know, the funny thing is that it's not like he's alone because uh, the day we brought my daughter home from the hospital, um, my son, who had been sleeping through ever since he was about 12 months old, stopped and started waking up in the middle of the night and, and coming into our bed. So it's like a musical bed. Sometimes I start off in my bed and end up on the floor of her room and, and my son will wake up and come into our bed and we just like shuffle around and you know, whatever works, who cares? Yeah. As long as your eyes are closed, <laughs> I don't care where we are or what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah, really so fun. most nights are a bit of a juggle for you. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you wake up feeling pretty tired to struggle through the day every day. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm really on the ball all the time. <laughs> <laughs> People talk to you and you go, what? Like, what? Me? Who? What? Yeah. Me? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, was, I was exactly the same. I found it really difficult, mm. you know. Um, as I said, my first child, she did sleep through. So it was a bit different to you. you know, so you were that smug mum going, oh, mm. my <laughs> angel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 those well, people that turn up to mother's group and go, oh, my child sleeps all the time. Yeah. yeah. You wear yeah. the badge of honour. Yeah. 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 yeah, well, I didn't realise. I thought that, you know, this isn't too bad. And then when my second child came along, it really hit me hard because I thought, what am I doing wrong? You know, but I was a little more relaxed the second time around, I must admit. But it would have been hard for you for the first you know, the well, first yeah, because child. you feel like such a failure. You feel like you've done something wrong. And because I'm a journalist, I researched the shit out of it. I read every single thing I could read on yeah. sleep because I was like, obviously, we're doing something wrong. Yeah. I just didn't realise my child was broken. He just came out that way. He was never going to be a sleeper. Um, 
I got a crap child. I wasn't a crap parent. Yeah. 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 So that's a good way. That's yeah. a good way of looking at yeah. it. It's them, not you. Yeah. It's totally them. And that would be my message to every new mother. It is your child. It's not you. It's the same with fussy, fussy eaters as well. Yeah. It's nothing you've done Damn. wrong. They yeah. came out trying to make you miserable. It's all right. Relax. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> Oh my God, the sexiest pair of undies that I wore when I was pregnant are the same undies that I wear now. <laughs> and they're basically bike shorts. <laughs> I wore those really odd ones that go like really low. You know, like underneath. No. The... Right. <laughs> no, no, they no, weren't I'm... sexy. They were like, you know, from Target and they, you know, like a pack of five for 10 bucks or something. No, I had those like, like those bike short ones that like came up to here and then like covered my belly and then like came down to here and then in summer, oh, no. I wore them as actual shorts. Oh, that's <laughs> sexy. Were you a bit of a foxy pregnant lady? Well, not the first time. No, the first time I gained a lot of fluid, so I was more like a Michelin man, kind oh, of, you know, mm. with the, yep. yep. Um, but the second time, the second time I was totally sexy and I just totally embraced it. I was just like, yep, I wore all the tight dresses, because you can't wear them after because it doesn't look as it nice. It really doesn't, no. no. Well, I was very lucky that I had um, 40 weeks of morning sickness for both pregnancies. Oh, that's unlucky. Um, plus chronic heartburn. Plus for the second half of my second pregnancy, I felt like my vagina was going to fall out. So mm, that's not sex that was a really top priority for me during, I like it was really sexy time. Oh, there's a difference between having sex and feeling sexy though, right? Oh, yeah, I wasn't I having any sex. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, it is kind of hard to feel sexy when you start growing all this extra hair. There's mostly a lot of extra hair. Across here. Um, you know, I don't think my husband's really into that, but if he was, it might have been a good time to experiment. Well, if he hasn't had sex for a really long time, there was probably a point where he was like, come at me, hairy bitch. Like, I will take it all just well, because it's there. Like, I don't care what you look like, just take your underpants off and get on yeah. you. Well, he, yeah, I don't think he was going to be objecting, so <laughs> he would have just taken what he could got, like get, so, you know. Oh, bless their heart. Yeah, I know, bless them. them. <laughs> it's not happening. So, Lisa, you have two kids under three and you went back to work when you, both your kids were six months old. Yeah. Now that would be hard. Crazy, actually. Hard doesn't even begin <laughs> to, <laughs> to cover it or describe it. Um, I think I had neither broken nor good children. They mm. came out and they weren't the worst sleepers, but they're definitely not the best. And my eldest has just turned three and he still wakes up once or twice a night. Mm. Um, and my baby, she still wakes up a couple of times a night. So I am living and have been for three years at work on, you know, approximately five hours a night. And yeah, I think I've missed a lot of, of work days. I've been there in body, yeah. but I've missed it in spirit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely. What people don't understand if they've not had children is you say five hours sleep, it's not five hours in I a know. row. That's right. Yeah. No, you can have no, 12 broken, hours of sleep, sleep, but if it's not in a row, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't count. And it was really hard going back to work after I had the first one and not long after I was pregnant with the second. So obviously being heavily pregnant and managing a couple of branches and a lot of people and a one-year-old was pretty full on. Yeah. Very, it was hectic, actually. I love it when you have one child and they say to you, like people, you know, they're always offering advice and they say, sleep when the baby <laughs> oh, sleeps. Oh my God. And you're like, okay, sure. Then you have a second child and you don't have that luxury. No. That happened to you, didn't it, Lee? Pretty much, yeah. So like you, like our first child was like a perfect sleeper. And from like six weeks, she was like sleeping through like eight, 12 hours a night. And I was like, <laughs> wearing my little badge of honor. I was like that smug bastard, you know, mother's yes. group. And I was like, my child sleeps, you know, oh, it's just, you know, it's just us. We're just really relaxed parents. Um, and then of course, when Teddy came along and she wasn't a sleeper at all. And I was, I did everything that I did with Annabelle that I thought were those cues to get a child to sleep. And I did that with Teddy and she was just a completely different child. Mm. So I was like, oh, well, like, what do we do? And then you really start to realize like those mothers that have children that don't sleep, you're like, Oh, I'm, really <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, I'm like, oh my God. And I'm like, here I was rubbing in that my first child slept. And you just like, and you, you realize what it's like and you realize what it's like to have those nights of broken hours yeah. sleep or not getting any sleep at all. And you literally wake up in the morning and you're like, how am I going to, how am I going to function? How am I going to get through the day? Like I've literally had 
no sleep, like the kids are already feral mm. and it's like not even 7am and you're like, I actually don't know how I'm going to get through to the end of this day. And then you just do mm. and you get up and you go out and you do things and you go on your play dates or you go and you go down the street and you do all the things that you need to do and you're literally like none of these people know yeah. that I'm like dead on the inside yeah. basically <laughs> <laughs> that like I seriously have like no idea what's going on right now Mom life. and like you said with a second child you, you can't just relax, like you've got a toddler that's not napping, so when you try and get the baby down for a sleep, you've still got to be switched on and that's you know, hard. you're still trying to do everything else. So yeah, I think you just kind of get used to it really. Then I found I was getting really bad anxiety when my baby wasn't sleeping, mm, you know, and yeah. I was like, please sleep, please, like I really need my sleep. Did yeah. anybody else Then you have get that? them to sleep, you like, and you and then get you anxious can't that you're going to wake up again yeah. and you're just like, oh my God, like, why can't I sleep? I'm so anxious right now. Yeah. Well, you make, you say really stupid things to your child. Like it will be 2 a.m. in the morning and you'll be like, you just, you're embarrassing yourself. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm screaming this at a six month old. Like you think I'm not an, ins I'm like, I'm not a sane person right now. I'm yeah. like, somebody needs to stop me. And there were times where my husband would come in and go, let's just walk out of this room now because you're scaring everybody. Yeah. <laughs> because you'd just be like, what is going wrong you right now? Why can't I fix this? And, you know, you feel like an absolute mess. Yeah. And um, there you were saying, you know, you get up in the morning, you keep going. There were mornings that I, I couldn't where I'd look at my husband and say, I'm not, I'm not a fit person to look after my kids today. Yeah. You should not leave me in charge. Mm. You know, there'd be days where, you know, my... I remember once my brother called and said, oh, do you want to come and meet me somewhere? And I said, I cannot get behind the wheel of a car like this. It's not safe. I don't yeah. feel safe driving. And I, that's the level of tiredness that I think some people don't necessarily grasp, mm. that there are times where you're like, I cannot... Function. I cannot function. Mm. It's like I, a drunk person getting behind yeah, the wheel. Yeah, like, mm. it's, but it's like leaving a, a drunk person in charge of two small children and you'd be sitting there like dazed and confused and watch them running around with knives and stuff and your, your brain's going, you should really stop this. Yeah. And your body's just going, oh, I just can't. So, yeah, you know, yeah. and that's a really scary thing to do. When I had my first baby, the hair in the back of my head all fell out. So I started taking hair vitamins, <laughs> thinking that it might make my hair grow really long and you know luxurious. But um, it basically only accelerated my leg hair, my underarm hair, and my <laughs> pubic hair. That would have been nice. <laughs> Did you stop taking the vitamins? No, I'm taking oh. them because I really want long hair. I know. We maybe try eating a different diet. <laughs> I had blonde underarm hairs and blonde like down there and blonde hair on my legs. And then after I was pregnant, everything just changed. So it went just really it went a bit bushy. The carpets don't match the drapes. <laughs> <laughs> That's <incredible. laughs> Can you tell that it's been dyed? Well, I haven't seen it, so I, I can't tell. But <laughs> I'm not comfortable with anybody down there after giving birth. I feel like everybody's already been down there. I remember when I when I was about to go into like <laughs> yeah, I do. When I was about to go and have my baby and I went to Chinatown to have my bits waxed before I went in and mm. um, she told me to get up on the bed like on all fours and lean over like as if I was in doggy style <laughs> and she told me that the baby was coming like oh. <laughs> and it was a joke. But I wasn't laughing. It was terribly embarrassing. She would have been able to see, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> any tips that any of you have, you know, that kind of helped, that might help, you know, some mums Coffee. watching at home? Coffee. Coffee. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Coffee. I thought you were going to say tips for sleeping and I was going to go, there are no <laughs> answers. <laughs> no, there are, everybody, listen to me, there are no answers. You cannot fix the child, but you can maybe survive the sleep deprivation. Yeah. yeah so just. I know coffee, coffee for us, but what about, you know, was there anything, you know, else that kind of worked for you? I mean, I, I found for myself, telling myself each day, you know, this mm. will pass, mm. you know, there's always tomorrow, sleep when you can, don't beat up on yourself, you know, if you're tired, take it easy, um, that's, you know, that's a lot Fresh easier said than done. Yeah, yeah. yeah I often found, yeah, if I had a really bad night, the best way would be just to say, right, 
get up, get your joggers on, get out, get some fresh air and go for a walk. And that yeah. often made me clearer and happier and ready to start Switch the day. Yeah. 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 For me, it's a shower. Yeah. I just need, I, <laughs> yes. I just need to wash myself. Yeah. It's sort of like, it's like a switch in my brain that goes, your day is starting. Right. Yeah. So just keep going. Yeah. Um, but my, my tip would just be don't feel guilty about doing nothing. Yeah. So yeah. if you really just can't struggle, turn on the TV. Your children will yeah, not become true. sociopaths if they watch a little bit of television. I used to do things like, we're going to play a fun game where mummy's the patient and you're the doctor. And I just lie down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or I'm a one. sleeping princess. Can I come and Until rescue they me? Say, yeah. <laughs> Until they say, it's me. time for your injections. <laughs> <laughs> my kids are quite violent. Man flu. Worst flu known to man. Sufferer feels as if they are dying. Uh, Mum flu. Same as man flu, but no one gives a f and now, a word from our sponsors. Before we go anywhere, I just want to do a word association <laughs> game. Okay, so I want you to say the first thing that comes into your head when I say a word. Oh. So, live vagina. <laughs> oh my god, it was hairy. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, <laughs> circumcision. Oh, dangerous. Okay, that's fair enough. Um, Lauren, perineum. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> um, labour. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't have labour. So, <laughs> um, long. Tantrum. All the time. Nappy. Who? Poo. Yuck. <laughs> Sloppy. <laughs> Dads. Awesome. I'm, I can't even be funny about that. Okay. Crying. Painful. Guilt. <laughs> Every day. Breast pad. <laughs> Absorbent side in. <laughs> I've done that. I know. <laughs> Maternity bra. Ugly. Mm. Pelvic floor. <laughs> Necessary. <laughs> Short. <laughs> yeah. So you like. Everywhere. Other people's kids? Painful. <laughs> Vagina. Big. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> like when I said <laughs> Thanks for that info. <laughs> and last one. Um, we suddenly know so much more about Lisa. <laughs> and last one, penis. I'm unfamiliar. <laughs> <laughs> Lately, it's <sorry. laughs> Well, that's all we have time for today. Being a mum can be hard and it can be lonely. And it's so important to know that you're not alone. We all experience the great highs and the lows this journey has to offer. I found the best remedy is talking to other mums. So be sure to tune in next time to Mummy Time TV. Make sure you email in any questions or topic suggestions via our website. You can also talk to any of the mums on today's show via our website. So until next time, goodbye. Hello and welcome to the very first episode of Mummy Time TV. This idea... Oh, mate, pregnancy is hot. Don't you reckon? Pregnancy is so hot. Do you, what about if I sit more casual? No. I've only got my mum voice. Pick that up! Yeah. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. Oh. <laughs> Mummy Time TV!